Good morning, and welcome to the Chapel of Trinity Church in Southport, Connecticut. I'm Ted Fries, one of the lay readers, and today I will be the person to lead us all in Rite 2 of morning prayer. And today is Tuesday, the 17th, and um, you can find the Rite of Morning Prayer uh, 2 on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer or online at bcponline.org. Lord, open our lips and we shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. A prayer from the English Book uh, of Common Worship. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in the day you have made as we value, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. We will now say the Venite. Alleluia, the Lord is risen, indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have prepared the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For we, he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's psalm is 90, verses 1 through 23. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you. And, your secret sin, and our secret sins and the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regrets the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts in wisdom. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The first reading today is from Ezekiel 7, verses 10 through 15, 21 through 27. The word of the Lord came to me. See the day, see it comes. Your doom has gone out. 
The rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence has grown into a rod of weak wilderness, of weakness. None of them shall remain, nor the abundance, nor the earth and their wealth, nor the preeminence among them. The time has come, the day draws near. Let us not, excuse me, let us not, uh, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. For the sellers shall not return to what has been sold as long as they remain alive. For the vision concerns all their multitude. It shall not be revoked. Because of their iniquity, they cannot maintain their lives. They have blown the horn and made everything ready, but no one goes to battle. For my wrath is upon all their multitude. The sword is outside. Pestilence and famine are inside. Those in the field die by the sword. Those in the city, famine and pestilence devour them. For the land is full of bloody crimes. The city is full of violence. I will bring the worst of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the arrogance of the strong, and their holy places shall be profaned. When anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster will come upon disaster. Rumor follow rumor. They shall keep seeking a vision from the prophet. Instructions shall parrot from the priest and the counsel from the elders. The king shall mourn, the prince shall be wrapped in despair, and the hands of the people of the land shall tremble. According to their way, I will heal with them. According to their own judgments, I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now say a song of praise, Benedictus est Domine. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We shall praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning and is now and will be forever. Alleluia. The second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verses 13 through 20. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he had no greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Human beings, of course, swear by something greater than themselves, and an oath given as confirmation puts an end to all disputes. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it by an oath, so that through two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain where Jesus, forerunner of our, on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll say a song, the song of the Lamb, Dignus S. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb, that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lord, be worshiped and praised, dominion and splendor forever and forever. This ends today's reading. Let us now say the Lord's Prayer found on page excuse me, 97. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known among earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Day. O loving Father, grant that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit, may be dedicated more fully to your service and live united in love according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray for those on Trinity's prayer list. John Hogan, Kelly, Brad, Karen, and Je Karen and Jessica, Jessica Golden, Alex Calder, Simone, Claudia and Sean Sullivan, Anne, Gwen, Gil, Stephen Shea, Patria Swan, Robert, Lillian, Whitney, Janet, Philip. And let us pray for those who have died from coronavirus and their families. We shall now say a prayer for those who suffer for the sake of conscience. O God, our Father, whose Son forgave the enemies while he was suffering shame and death, strengthen those who suffer for the sake of conscience, that they are accused, that when they are accused, save them from speaking in hate. When they are rejected, save them from bitterness. When they are in prison, save them from despair and to us, your servants, give grace to respect their witness and to discern the truth, that our society may be cleansed and strengthened. This we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our mediator and righteous judge. Amen. A prayer for the human family found on page 815. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and continue to accomplish your purposes on earth. That, to your good time, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for our country, found on page 810. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee, that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of the favor of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion to one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those in whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to the law, we may show ourselves great among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the time of trouble, 
suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All of which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the, a prayer attributed to St. Francis. And that is found on page 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be, um, excuse me, Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now, a moment of silence. And now let us say a prayer of thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now the prayer of St. Chrysostom found on the next page. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O God, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And now let us go forth and enjoy this day that the Lord has given us.